So um, tonight we wanted to do something just a little different. This was Pastor's heart on sharing this. And so uh, he called me this afternoon and said, Ray, would you cover? I just don't think I should be there. And uh, I learned a long time ago there are two things you should always be ready to do. Always be prepared to die and to preach. So uh, I had one of two options, and I decided to do something out of the Bible. So uh, uh, the truth of the matter is uh, what he wanted to emphasize, and it's such a, a, a valuable thing, is we want to talk about the Word of God tonight with this challenge. And I look around the auditorium, uh, but I know we have some people that are watching online and we want to challenge all of our church family to be involved in the discipleship journal reading plan for this next year. Now, I know a lot of the people in this group have already been doing this, and you know the value of this. And so, uh, those of you who have these in your possession, would you please hand these out uh, and just... Take one of these. Uh, if you're a couple, you can take one, or if, if both of you want one. This is the hard copy of what's available online through uh, several mediums, but I'd really like to encourage you to, to be part of what we're doing with the Discipleship Reading Journal. It's part, uh, if, if you download the YouVersion app, there are multiple options under version for Bible reading plans, but for, a, for us as a church, for multiple years now, we have been doing this discipleship journal Bible reading plan, and it keeps us, a lot of us are in sync then with our scripture readings, and it's just an amazing thing. So many of you have, over the course of years now, been able to accomplish reading through your entire Bible in the course of a year, and you know, as you've talked to other people in our congregation, that they're following right along with you. I've heard conversations of readings that took place the week before, and, and you were able to talk about those things because a lot of people are following along with that. Now, there are others that uh, get ahead. It's, I'll tell you what, it's hard for me sometimes uh, I love the fact that there's readings every day in the year. There are readings in the gospel. And it, it, sometimes it's hard for me just to stop reading about Jesus uh, when it breaks up a chapter into two or three entries. I mean, I just read the whole chapter. And so we, sometimes we end up reading ahead, and uh, that's fine. Uh, I know some of you uh, have, uh, well before December, finished your Bible reading, started reading it again. Uh, fantastic. But we do want to encourage you to do this. And might I uh, encourage you, you can go on our website at mycsbc.com and you can find this reading plan. You can download it to your electronic devices for version. And once you get to version again, there's going to be a whole bunch of different reading plan options. But look for this one, the Discipleship journal reading plan because that's the one we're going to be following that's what this is a hard copy of and sometimes this is handy just to be able to pick it up and see where you are in the day of the month and just do your reading that way if you don't have the availability of getting to your electronic device but uh, we just want to encourage everybody to do this you know the word of God is not just the product of mere men this is a supernatural book. And really, if you think about it, now, uh, I know a lot of you like to read, and, and you do read good quality uh, reading material besides the Scriptures. But if what we say about the Bible is true, then there is nothing that you can read that's more important in your life than to hear from God and you hear from God by reading his word. I often say it this way. The Bible was written for two main reasons. The first reason that we have God's word given to us 
is that we may come to him. Because the Bible tells us how we can gain eternal life. So one of the very most important things about why we have the Bible is that we may come to him. Then the next major reason we have the Bible is that we may know him. Coming to him in salvation is the instant, isn't it? It's, it's the calling upon the name of the Lord, and he does the saving. But getting to know God better, that's a lifelong pursuit. And that's why we stay in God's word so that we can know him better. I love the way Paul said it in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. He, says, he said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable into his image. Folks, that's the reason why we continue studying the word of God, reading the word of God, so that we can know him and therefore glorify him with our life. So I just want to remind you, this is going to be a very simple idea, and then we're going to actually give some time for some of you to share testimony, brief testimony of, of how the Bible impacts you. All right? So we're going to do that in a moment, but I want to invite your attention to 2 Timothy chapter 3, a very familiar portion of Scripture. And Paul is writing to his young protege, Timothy. And Timothy is a young man in the Lord in the ministry. He's a pastor at Ephesus. And Paul is writing to Timothy to encourage him. But one of the things he encourages him the most in is that he would be ready to preach. But what's he going to preach? The Word of God. And so in chapter 3, these are familiar verses. Maybe you don't have them marked in your Bible, but you may want to. But in 2 Timothy chapter 3, notice verse 15 through 17, the end of the chapter. And, and Paul, again, talking to Timothy, says this in verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Okay, we're not going to spend a lot of time parsing out all of the insights of these verses, but I want to illustrate the profound thoughts shared in those couple verses. And this is, the, this is our thesis. What, why should we spend our time in the Word of God? Well, first of all, as I said from the beginning, it's a supernatural book. We want to hear from God. The way we do that is to read his word, all right? So Paul reminds Timothy that even from his childhood, he had been introduced by his mother and his grandmother to the word of God. And the most important thing I want to highlight in verse 15 is that as a child you'd known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. If the first thing that the Bible was written for us for was to give us the, the knowledge of how we could come to God, that's it. So that you could know how to come to salvation. But beyond that, there's the value of a life of learning the Word of God so that you might know God better. So notice verse 16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. That literally means that God breathed out the words of the Scriptures. Holy men of old, 2 Peter says, holy men of old spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit of God. And it's interesting in that passage in 1 Peter chapter 1, it talks about these holy writers of the Scriptures, these 
prophets, these apostles that wrote the scriptures, that oftentimes they would write what God wanted them to write because God instructed them. He breathed upon them what he wanted them to write. And then it says that they spent the rest of their lives searching diligently about what they had written about. I mean, they were making prophecies of the future that they didn't even understand. And so the very writers of the Scriptures studied their own writings, trying to figure out what does God mean by this? And sometimes none of that was apparent in their lifetime. It's apparent to us as we've seen those prophecies come to fulfillment, right? So the Word of God is the Scripture that is inspired by God. It's breathed by God. And you'll notice that it tells us right here the value of this Word of God that we are encouraging all of us to read. It's profitable. All right? In what areas? Well, it's profitable in doctrine. Now, doctrine just really means... Uh, teachings. And one of the things we study the most about in our teachings is what does the Word of God say? What did Jesus say? That's why don't we love reading the Gospels. It's the life of Jesus. If we want to know what God is like, we want to know what Jesus is like when, he, when God was in human form. But we study the words of God because it's the words of life. So we study words that Jesus said. That's why the Gospels are so important to our Bible reading. But it's valuable for doctrine, the teachings that Jesus gave. We are to know those things. We're to live by those things. You know, I used to, years ago, growing up, I would read in Thessalonians and Timothy, and it talked about things like... Uh, in the end times, they will not endure sound doctrine. And I used to think to myself, how, how is that happening? How will that be possible? But we have all lived into an era now where there are just a lot of places where those churches, those preachers, they do not endure sound doctrine any longer heaping to themselves teachers, having itching ears, just going to tickle them. I drove by a sign this morning at a church that said, uh, uh, don't be like Mr. Potter during the Christmas season. There's a lot of Mr. Potters that said, you should be George Bailey. And I thought, that's the best you can do for a sign? I think we're supposed to be more like Jesus, not George Bailey. I mean, it's a wonderful life, great, but that's not what we preach. And when, in the end times, they will not endure sound doctrine. That's what I love about our church. We are given to the preaching of the Word of God because this is what is important. What does God say? And we are true to the doctrine of the scriptures. So the word of God that's breathed out by God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. Sometimes, I mean, the doctrine is going to keep us right, but sometimes when we're wrong, we need reproof. And is there anything more powerful than the word of God to reprove us when we have failed him? Right? That's why we should be reading it, immersing ourselves in it. It's also profitable for correction. Correction is if, if we need the reproof because we've messed up, then correction tells us how we can get right again. Okay? So all of those things are valuable as we read the Word of God. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be profitable for doctrine, for reproving us, for correcting us, getting us back on the right path. And finally, for instruction in righteousness. All of us want to live a life that
that glorifies God. It should be our passion. The way we do that is to know what God says and to live a life that's full of instruction in righteousness, how we should behave, how our light should so shine before, their, before men that they would see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. That's the idea of instruction in righteousness. How should we then live? Verse 17 says it this way, and maybe you've not seen it this way, and I want to highlight it just a little bit so you grasp it, but verse 17 says that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished. All right? Now, now some of your Bibles may have just corrected that word and put thoroughly. Okay? Like they're synonymous. And, and the, I don't want to parse that out too much, but the truth of the matter is I like the word throughly. Okay? The reason why we want to be in the Word of God is for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, fully mature, complete in him, but we are truly furnished. Now again, I, I don't want to split hairs. I'm the last person that's going to do that. But the truth of the matter is, thoroughly versus thoroughly. Now, thoroughly, almost to me, almost has an external idea to it. That it's thoroughly, it's all, but to be thoroughly furnished is internal. Now, I, again, uh, I, I'm not in any way implying that there's not some synonymous use of those words. But I, I just like the way it's stated here, that we may be truly furnished unto all good works. Folks, that's the reason we read God's Word. It's going to be what keeps us on the right track as we learn more about God. We know better how to glorify Him and how to live a righteous life before others that will draw them to him. And that should be the goal. So that's why we're encouraging everybody to, to join us in this Bible reading during 2022. It's going to be amazing as we all do this together one more time. And are you like me as you've re read through these verses the way that they're broken down, you've seen it here in this sheet. But as we read in the Gospels, we read at the beginning in the book of Acts, we read in the book of Psalms, we read in Genesis. Those readings, isn't it amazing as you do your readings through the course of the year, how we're, we're reading something in the Old Testament that specifically is talked about in our reading in the New Testament. And it just shows the unity of the scriptures, how that God in his divine plan orchestrated all of this for our benefit, for our doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness, that we're going to be completely mature as we know God's word and let it do its work in our life. I... Uh, had a situation years ago now, and it was a young man who claimed to be an atheist. He uh, went to the University of Missouri up at Rolla. At that time, it was, that's what it was called, and uh, he was an engineer, and he was very smart, and he claimed to be an atheist. We started hanging out with a bunch of Cherry Street college-age kids, his age, and I, it was one of those amazing things because he literally was one to Jesus because of the love that some of our college students gave him. But some of these college students who were praying for Kurt, they were so concerned that he would end up getting saved. He was an atheist. That was his declaration. 
But he liked hanging out with these Christian kids. I, okay. Uh, but you know what? They loved him to Jesus. But they brought him to me. And they said, Brother Adams, you're an archaeologist. Kurt doesn't believe the Bible. He doesn't believe in God. By the way, I'll just interject. Don't you love the way our pastor has shared that with us in the past? When there, there's, no really, there's no really such a thing as an atheist. And he pointed out, if anybody's really honest and they t- tell you they're an atheist, you could just ask them candidly, all right, do you, would you say that you know half of all knowledge in the world? Well, anybody that's an honest person is going to say, no, I, I don't know half of all the truth in the world. Well, is it possible that God's in the other half? You're not an atheist. You're an agnostic. You, you just don't know if there's a God or not. But you don't, you don't have enough information to know if there's a God or not because you don't know all truth. And I've never had anybody answer that question that, yes, I know it all. And if they do, run. <laughs> you heard about the dyslexic agnostic insomniac who stayed awake at night wondering if there really was a dog. Okay. You need me to explain that to you, Ben? Okay. Dyslexic, agnostic, insomniac. Okay. Anyway, Kurt said, uh, they brought me Kurt and said, since you know so much about archaeology, would you, would you convince Kurt that he should believe the Bible and accept Jesus? And I looked at Kurt, and I said, Kurt, I could give you a whole bunch of books and challenge you to read them, trying to convince you on all of the intelligent reasons why you should become a Christian. I said, you're not, you're not going to read a single book, and not one of those books is going to change your heart. I said, but I think you're an honest person. I think you're an honest truth seeker. And, and I was operating on this principle. From Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11, it says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I have, uh, shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. The thing that God says he would honor and would never return void is his word. And I said to Kurt, I said, listen, I'm going to challenge you to do something. I don't want you to read any books. I want you to read the Bible. I said, you promise me this. You read the Gospel of John. We're going to do this for a month. And I said, what I want you to do is this. I want you to read the first seven chapters of John. And I want you to read that. You could read all seven chapters in 20 minutes. Probably shorter than that, as smart as you are. I said, read all seven chapters, first seven chapters of John. And then I said, do that again. And do that again for a week. Then, then go to the second seven chapters and read them over and over. Write down questions you have. Write down things you don't understand. And all I did was challenge him to read the word of God. And he said, I'll, I'll do that. Do you know before the month was over, I got a call at midnight. When you're in the ministry and the phone rings at midnight, it's never good news. But it was Kurt. He said, Brother Adams, I've been doing what you asked me to do, and I've been reading John, and I'd write down questions, and then I'd keep reading and reading, and the questions got answered right there in the Bible. He said, This is what he said, would you tell me how I could be saved? And I said, it would be the honor of my life. And over the phone, I led him to the Lord. And I said, you want me to tell your friends about that? He said, no, I'll tell them, click. He hung up. Boy, how old was that? Click. (laughs) 
<laughs> he hung up an old phone. <laughs> anyway, he, he, in the middle of the night, he's calling all of his friends, telling them he got saved. And they'd been praying for him every day. He didn't have a chance. He had been loved to Jesus by the actions of these Christian kids around him, and they had been praying for him, and he was honest enough with himself to read what would change his life. And he got saved. Happy to, happy to tell you, Kurt's no longer an atheist. He found out there really is a God because Jesus lives in his heart now. Okay, so what we're going to do for just a few minutes, I'd just like for you to maybe, these are just going to be short testimonies, just a sentence or two, but we have some people that are going to move to you with a microphone. If you'll just raise your hand, they'll come to you. But I'd like for you just, is there, would you like to share something in your life where the Word of God did something special, meant something special. Maybe it's a matter of comfort. Maybe it's a matter of just learning more about God because of something you read in his word. So I'm going to open that up at this time, and if you uh, have a, just a brief testimony you'd like to share about the impact of God's word in your life. I know what I said earlier. You should be ready to do two things, die or preach. Nobody's preaching today. Uh, I, I've already tried to handle that. But I do want just a brief testimony, something that has impacted you in your reading of God's Word and explaining why all of us should be following with, through with this reading plan this year. Okay? Anybody like to start us out? Anybody? Okay. Mike, you're going to have to move fast. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. I'm impressed. Thank you, Tanya. I just love how the Word of God will redirect your focus. Say it again, please. How the Word of God will redirect your focus. Love it. Thank you, Tanya. That's the kind of testimony I want. It's very good. Annette? So many people want the Lord to speak to them. But they don't take the time to read the word. This is where so it's at. So can speak to them. And Thanks. that's how I found he talks to me. Thank you, Annette. Appreciate that very much. Judy. I don't really need it. About five years ago, I had never, I was raised in church, never read through the Bible. Went to Bible college in the 90s, never read through the Bible. Um, Five years ago, I committed to reading through it, and about two months later, God tore out the stony heart and put in one flesh, and my life's never been the same. And so uh, reading it every day made a huge difference, and I encourage anyone that's not done it, just try. Uh, you may never, you'll never look back, and you'll just want to do it all the time. So. God bless you, Julie. Outstanding. Anybody else? Hello. Okay, go. I just like to say, for this is for everybody. Um, they they got saved by the Romans Road, and I can remember my husband's sister coming up from Texas, and um, I told her I said I rage and I'm upset all the time. I don't understand what's going on. She said, "Can I show you something in the Bible?" So she took me through the Romans Road, and I got saved in. I will tell you, the 27th of December is when I got saved, so I remembered that. And then the 29th, which is today, I got baptized. Oh, good, Patty. God bless you. Thank you for that. And you're exactly right. It was, it was finding out from the Word of God how you could become a child of God. God bless you. That's great. All right. One more here. I just like that, um, well, first of all, this thing right here, this Bible, it's an absolute miracle, in my opinion, that it is even put together in such a fashion in this day and age and has survived the thousands upon thousands of years of, of translation. 
and the, the ability to have been lost in that translation, but that it was not. Yep. And the thing that really continues to blow my mind is that this is not just a book, in my opinion. This has the most amazing ability through the Lord to jump out of that book and into real life all of the time. Amen. That's great. Thank you very much for that. Outstanding. Yes, Elizabeth? I was raised in church my entire life. I think two months year, two months old I was in church. Um, and I can probably tell you I know every story in the Bible. And the first year I sat and read through the Bible, I've done it five times now, um, I found things I never knew. And I'm still finding things every time. Same story, I can read it five times now, and I've learned new things. Yep. I mean, you got to read the Bible. And doing a plan like this where you go from the beginning to the end is a must in every Christian. Mm. They need to know from the beginning to the end, in order, everything that God has for us to know. Amen. Good. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Hold on, Jim. I was. Uh, no, I was just, I didn't mean to rebuke you. I just got a comment. And at my age, I need to comment now or I'll forget. <laughs> but isn't it true that the Word of God is alive? Just exactly what Elizabeth said. You can read the same thing that you've read a hundred times, and you can read it, and the Holy Spirit will illuminate your, t your thoughts, and all of a sudden it's like, wow, I never saw that. And what a nugget that you, you have learned in that. And the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Excellent. Thank you, Elizabeth. Go ahead, Jim. I just love that when you're, when you're getting into the Word of God and you're reading it, that you might not remember it right at that time, but at the time that you need it, God plays in your heart, yeah. and he calms your spirit. Yeah. He gives you what you need. Amen. Good word, Jim. You're exactly right. You, you just starting down that path triggered my thoughts so... It's amazing how verses that I don't even remember ever committing to memory... And God will bring it to my memory. Just exactly at a moment it needs to minister to somebody. And the only reason that happens is because we're reading it over and over and over. And, and when God needs to call it, he does to our mind. That's great. Thank you, Jim. All right. Anybody else? Yes. Go ahead, Mike. Um, if you don't read the Word of God, you'll never know who God is. Being uh, an inspired book, he reveals more and more to you as time goes on. And you see the things that are happening in our world, and you see scriptures that just come to your mind and say, wow, if people would only do what the Word of God says. Second Chronicles 7.14, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Yeah. That's what's needed in America today. Yeah. But people need to recognize God's word is the authority and God is the authority and, and trust him. That's Good. what the word is about, trusting him. Outstanding. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. Anybody else? All right, well, that's a great transition. Go ahead, Paul, one more. Uh, can you get back there, Mike? Sure. Paul Jones. Paul, start walking towards Mike. Meet him halfway. Okay, Mike's going a lot faster than you are, Paul. That was about, a, that was about one eighth of the way, Paul. I just want to say, I read the Bible every day, and it just breaks my heart to know how much he loves me. I mean, I still cry. <laughs> I haven't got over it. <laughs> God bless you, buddy. Great word, Paul. Thank you so much. And isn't that true, too? We see that God is love and that he loved us. Outstanding. Thank you very much. That's a great place for us to conclude tonight. Um, Mike said, it's time to pray. We're going to take a little bit of time to pray. We're going to share our hearts with God. He knows already, but it's our chance to be part of 
calling out to God on behalf of intercession for other people. So we're going to do that now. We thank those who have joined us online tonight. And